making a list, checking it twice, gonna tell you which albums were naughty and nice toms. Hit parade is coming to town. <laughs> Season's greetings from Tom's Hit Parade. I hope you all have been having a wonderful holiday week, uh, whichever December holiday you choose to observe. If any at all, I won't make you pick one. But yes, we are down to the final few days of 2018, and you know what that means. Most of my fellow YouTube music junkies and I are busy making our lists and checking them twice. I'm going to be going fairly light on the year-end lists this year, uh, compared to most of my other uh, fellow YouTubers anyway. I won't be doing any worst albums or songs lists. Uh, I'll explain why in just a minute here. But uh, today, for the first round of lists, I'm going to be talking about my five most disappointing albums of the year. And I'm also going to be talking about my favorite and least favorite album covers of the year. Uh, but first of all, before I get into the lists themselves, let me just uh, explain a couple things really quickly. The albums that I mention in my lists are limited to the ones that I actually bought this year. Uh, this is why you won't see any worst lists on my channel. Um, I mean, I won't buy something unless I'm fairly confident that I'm going to like it. I mean, I, I listen to stuff on YouTube, I listen to the singles and whatnot, uh, and then I decide whether or not I think it's worth buying and checking out in full. I like to leave some surprises for when I actually listen to the item. But anyway, uh, a couple of reasons why I don't put worst lists on my channel is I like to keep the negativity to a minimum on my channel, plus while I'd love to be able to listen to a lot more than I do, um, not only do I not really have the time, but honestly, to expose myself to that much music would be a little overwhelming to me. I mean, I don't get me wrong, I love music to death. I would go insane without music, but if I listened to too much music, I would probably go just as insane. Uh, and that's one reason why I don't subscribe to any music streaming services, at least not yet. Uh, but anyway... Another reason is I like to keep my scope fairly narrow, uh, you know, concentrate on the core with the artists that I'm already familiar with, and then, you know, I just kind of casually put my feelers out when I feel like it um, for artists that are new to me and, you know, check them out in my own time and on my own terms. Um, one reason is I like to uh, keep my scope fairly narrow, and narrow, as I said, just so that I can feel like I'm paying each album the amount of attention that I think they deserve. So, you know, because the more stuff you listen to, the less time you're going to have to really take it in, absorb it, and all that stuff. But anyway, to make a long story even longer. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention briefly is, this should go without saying, but judging from some of the comments I read on other YouTubers' channels, apparently it does still need to be said. Uh, my views of the albums and songs I talk about and their positions in my lists are my own personal opinions. Music is an art form, and all art is subjective, so uh, you can disagree with them if you feel differently, but my opinions are neither wrong nor right. And with the utmost respect, the same goes for yours. So now that we got that boilerplate stuff out of the way, without further ado, -do, let's get on with the list. Uh, my first list, as I said, is my five most disappointing albums of the year. And the way that I qualify my most disappointing albums is... Uh, these are albums that, I, as I said, I actually bought physically. There's the reason they're on the list. But the ones that were the most disappointing to me are ones that I actually ended up selling back to the local stores for trade credit. I just, I just cared for them that little. A couple of honorable mentions, though, first. Uh, and these are ones that I couldn't bear to get rid of. I, I like them. I don't hate them. I don't hate anything on this list. It's just, you know, these were disappointing, but not so disappointing that I wanted to get rid of them. Uh, first one is Origins by Imagine Dragons. Uh, I talked about this uh, earlier in the year, and I was mm, moderately defensive of this album at first. But, uh, you know, it's it's cooled on me in the last, uh, what, two months, I guess. Yeah, there are a couple of good songs that I like on here. Actually, one of the ones that uh, is most maligned, Zero. I actually, for some reason, I like that one. It's just really catchy to me. And the... A lot of reviewers commented on how banal the lyrics were. That actually didn't bother me so much. It's just, you know, I, I have trouble remembering a lot of the songs on this. And I think a, a big part of it is, as I, as I may have mentioned in my review earlier, the, the one of the reasons I think this was such a letdown is, be, is it because it came so soon after Evolve. I think if they had waited another eight months, a year, 
fine-tuned the songs a little bit more, punched up the lyrics and whatnot, I think this album would have gotten a much better reception. So, yeah. Take a little breather between albums, guys. I think you'll probably have better results. And my other honorable mention of the year is Man of the Woods by Justin Timberlake. Uh, I like this album. I don't hate it. I mean, yeah, I, I couldn't bear to get rid of the CD, as you can see. But I guess the, the big letdown for me with this was that it was just so scattered. I mean, there were so many different sounds. When I heard the song Say Something featuring Chris Stapleton, I, was, I got really excited. I mean, it was such a good song, and I was just kind of hoping that the entire album would be like that, you know, that kind of a, a country hybrid with R&B, which could work. I mean, Avicii made EDM and country blend together, so I don't see why it couldn't have worked. It's just Justin threw so many different things into the pot, so much, you know, techno and R&B and all that other stuff that this just felt really disjointed and really scattered. But, uh, yeah, I mean, a couple of good songs on here, as I said, uh, more than uh, on uh, Origins. But, yeah, he just he just tried to do too many different things with this album, or possibly he didn't know what he wanted to do with the album. So, yeah, just too darn unfocused. Almost schizophrenic, I guess you'd say. So, but yeah, those were my honorable mentions anyway. And now down to the actual list. Uh, the first one on my list is the third album by Scotty McCreary called Seasons Change. Now, I liked Scotty and American Idol. I rooted for him all season long. Loved his debut album, and I really liked his sophomore album. But this one, it just fell flat for me. It, it was like I, I mentioned in my uh, review of it early in the year. It felt like all of the songs were retreads of, you know, stuff that was done by other country singers or in a couple of cases even by himself on on previous albums of his it's just you know it was a little too full of country cliches in the lyrics just yeah and, and i struggled as with a lot of the albums on this list i struggled to remember more than one or two of the songs after three or four listens to the album so yeah just i, I guess one reason was i just had gotten to expect so much from him from with his previous two albums that yeah this one was just a, a big letdown so yeah sorry scotty maybe maybe your next album will be a little bit better the next one on my list is something that a lot of people probably have not heard of uh, this is the second album by a slovak jazz guitarist named andreas Verratti. it's called the quest now uh he put out his debut album in 2014 at the age of 16 i think he was he was discovered by uh, Quincy Jones and a couple of other people. He's a jazz guitarist who uh, cites Django Reinhardt and George Benson as influences, and you can definitely hear the George ben Benson in his guitar work. It's just amazing. And uh, his debut album, as I said, was fantastic. In fact, I'm kind of surprised now that I did not include it in my favorite albums of 2014. It was just that good. It had guest vocal turns from people like Nicky Yanovsky and uh, Gregory Porter. Uh, it was just a fantastic work. Um, so when I saw this album in uh, Music Millennium a few months back in the store, I went ahead and picked it up. I, you know, I got really excited, just picked it up, brought it home, and listened to it. And yeah, I was just so disappointed in it. Um, one of the things was, there, there were two big reasons why it disappointed me. One of them was that he had moved much more into a freeform and improv style, which has always been really hard for me to get into. I mean, one of the... Uh, pedestrian things maybe you'd say about my brain is that I'm very much used to and very much accustomed to the conventional verse chorus verse chorus song structure you know three to four minutes although some of the songs on Andreas's debut album were longer I mean I song length doesn't bother me it's just you know the structure of the song has to be relatively uniform it's uh, that's probably why I'm not I have so much trouble getting into prog rock and uh, jam bands like Fish and the Grateful Dead I've just never been able to get into them but yeah the the freeform and improv style just kind of uh threw me off and also uh there wasn't as much of andreas guitar work as i was hoping for uh the album is recorded by a uh, it's basically a jazz combo a, a quartet i think it is and you know god love him for uh sharing the spotlight being willing to share share the spotlight with his fellow band members but you know at the same time the album was credited to andreas Verratti, not the andreas Verratti quartet or whatever it was so yeah i really missed hearing his guitar front and center on that and so yeah that plus the the real free form improv style just uh created a very very disappointing album for me i was kind of crushed at that one uh, i i tried 
to listen to it four or five times, and yeah, it just was not my cup of tea, unfortunately. Those of you who, I mean, if you really like the freeform style of jazz, do not let that scare you away. You might like this album, so seek it out if, if you're into that sort of thing. But just for me, you know, as I said, it just wasn't my cup of tea. Okay, on to the next album on my list of disappointments for the year of 2018. It is 44876 by Sting and Shaggy. Now, I'm an 80s kid, so I grew up listening to The Police, so I really like Sting. And I like several of Shaggy's songs as well. Uh, so I guess maybe since I liked the two of them, I was expecting this album to be more than the sum of its parts. But And it should have at least been the sum of its parts, shouldn't it? Uh, but <laughs> honestly, it ended up feeling less than. Uh, it's almost like, you know, they met at a party and said, hey, you want to go record some songs together? Sure. And so they just kind of went in in an afternoon or two, banged out a dozen songs, and put it out on, on an album. And it just it just felt half-baked, really. Um, now, honestly, I, I don't mind it when an album doesn't have an overriding uh, narrative thread or, you know, concept. I, I've never been huge on concept albums. I, I'm okay with an album sounding like a collection of singles, really, you know, with no interconnecting, you know, arc, as I said, you know, or theme or anything. But I have to wonder if maybe that's what this album needed. Uh, you know, as it is, as I said, it just sounds like a collection of miscellaneous songs. It's uh, maybe they should have had a theme, a concept going through the album. Maybe it would have been a little more profound, a little more likable. So, uh, but yeah, I just, I, I went into it, you know, I, as I said, I bought the CD and went into it really expecting to like it and was terribly disappointed. The next item on my list is Pray for the Wicked, the latest album by Panic at the Disco. Now this was my first exposure to the band Panic at the Disco, and I liked the album at first. I liked the the energy of the songs, the anthemic arena rock style, if you will, of the songs, but uh, it quickly wore out on me, uh, mostly because they were all... all of the songs except, except the very last track were this, you know, pumped up energetic stuff, and uh, it wore out my ears, honestly. There was just not much of a variation in the sound until the very last track, so uh, it caused ear fatigue more than anything else. Um, you know, an album for me needs to have... I, I love energetic, hooky songs as much as the next guy, but honestly, an album like that needs to be broken up here and there with ballads or mid-tempo numbers, you know, just to give it a variation in sound. Uh, but yeah, uh, friends of mine have uh, told me after the fact, I learned, that uh, this was not the album to introduce yourself to the band with. Uh, so they've encouraged me to uh, try a different album by them in their discography. I, I have not done that yet. I haven't worked up the uh, the nerve, I guess you'd say, yet. This album left that much of, honestly, a, a bad taste in my mouth or in my ears, I guess, as the case may be. So maybe I'll put that on my New Year's resolution list to... Uh, give Panic! at the Dis Disco uh, another try with one of their earlier albums. So, uh, yeah, another disappointment. And the last disappointment on my list is Speak Your Mind, the debut album by Anne-Marie. Now, over the last few years, I've developed uh, more of a liking for the spunky female artists like, uh, oh, uh, Betty Who is one of them, uh, Casey Musgraves, she has kind of an attitude about her, um, Megan Trainer, I like her, uh, so I thought, you know, I thought I would like Anne Marie. Uh, Listen to a couple of the clips, and, and they were fairly good. I, that probably should have been my first indication. I wasn't totally won over by them. This was more of a, a kind of an impulse buy. Uh, but yeah, the, the songs turned out to be unmemorable, and her attitude is was kind of off-putting. I mean, it was like you know the other artists that I mentioned. They have an attitude with you know, a, some purpose and some kind of some integrity behind it, I guess you'd say, for lack of a better word. Uh, but, you know, Anne-Marie just came off as having, you know, just a rebel without a cause kind of, uh, you know, just an attitude for have it for the sake of having an attitude. You know, so that was kind of a, a bit of a put-off, just, you know, for something about her style just, just didn't sit well with me. And, yeah, as I said, the songs were just completely forgettable. So, uh, yeah, those were my five disappointments of 2018. And honestly, the the year was pretty good. If that was, if those were pretty much all the disappointments I had, those were really the only new albums that I bought this year that I ended up uh, not liking and selling back to store for trade credit. So out of what forty some new albums that I bought, that's a pretty good ratio. So uh, okay, now that that rather unsavory list is out of the way, let's get on to the other list I have in mind today. It is a list of my three least favorite and three most favorite album covers of the year. 
Now, as the name of this list implies, this has to do with just the cover art images of the albums, not any of their content. So if any of the choices seem controversial to you, just remember I'm only strictly talking about the album covers. Uh, the first, uh, let's get the negative ones out of the way first. My least favorite album covers. Coming in at third place is Anthem by Madeline Peru. Now, I kind of get the reasoning behind, the log logic behind the album cover. Uh, she's an artist with a French connection. <laughs> um, so it's the album cover is the colors of the French flag, kind of uh, blurred together. And the uh, there you'll see, if you look closely at the album cover, there are a couple of uh, birds in flight that uh, makes it kind of look like, you know, it's a picture of a, a misty morning with birds kind of, you know, flying through fog and whatnot. So that gives it a nice little touch, but just for some reason, the album cover just underwhelmed me. I don't know, maybe it's just because of the, the text in that, uh, you know, Arial uh, font, just very, very plain looking. So, but yeah, I was just, you know, I, I kind of appreciate the art artistry of the album cover or, or you know, the composition of it, I guess you'd say. That's the word I was thinking of, trying to think of. But it's, yeah, it's just, as I said, it left me kind of underwhelmed. Okay, my runner-up for least favorite album cover of the year is Shawn Mendes' self-titled album. Now, when I saw when I first saw the album art drop on the internet, I took a look at it and said, "Huh? Honestly, it's I, I kind of get the logic behind the image. You know, it's like so you can see what's inside of me with these songs. Maybe that's what he was thinking of when uh, they they did this album cover. But honestly, the execution is it looks like a cheesy painting you'd buy at a thrift store for ten bucks." Honestly, it's just it's just got that look to it. I, I I don't know what it is. I yeah, I mean, you know, the album is good as I said. It, it's going to be on my favorite albums of the year list, but uh, yeah, just the album cover. I I just did not care for it, honestly. Um so, yeah, enough said about that. Uh and my choice for my least favorite album cover of the year, it's a little controversial. It is the 1975's A Brief Inquiry into Online Relationships. Uh I've never been much for abstract art and this I'm sure this definitely falls into the category I don't know if I've to be honest I have not looked up online to see if there was a logic to why they made this album cover this way but yeah just that plain white background with a few randomly placed colored pixels in it and you know and then the text on the sides it's just it was kind of like uh, Madeline Peru's cover it just kind of underwhelmed me it's like that's the album cover Really? I guess I guess I probably would have felt the same way with the Beatles White Album if it you know if it came out in my lifetime. Maybe I guess what can I say? I, as I said, I'm just not much into abstract art. So yes, those are my least favorite album covers of the year. But anyway, you know the least said about those album covers the better. But uh, now to end this video on an upbeat note, I'm going to tell you what my favorite album covers of the year were. My top three. Uh, and again, these won't, at least one of these is going to be a bit of a controversial choice. In fact, this is the one. Uh, my third place album cover of the year is Origins by Imagine Dragons. Now, you know, the music, as I said, was very unmemorable, um, downright unlikable to some people. But I have always loved the album covers that Imagine Dragons have put out. I mean, every one of them has been great. Even even Evolve, was it was kind of min minimalistic, but I loved the just the composition of it for some reason. But yeah, this one is kind of has kind of a dystopian or um, uh, urban decay uh, look to it. Um, you know, in the background with the the crumbling buildings and and you know ivy growing up the uh, man-made structures and all that. And then you have this circle of uh, light, you know, in the center. That's you know you don't really know what that's supposed to symbolize or signify, but just the way they put that album to cover together, I, I just I just love it. I love looking at it. Listening to the album is another thing, but I like looking at the cover. What can I say? Um, my second place for favorite album cover of the year is Dirty Computer by Janelle Monet. And uh, I was saying a few minutes ago that I don't care much for abstract art, and I don't know if, I mean, in a way this would qualify as abstract art, but in a way it doesn't, because it is actually a photograph of Janelle's face. But I guess it's like the geometry of it that's at work is what kind of intrigues me. You know, she's got this veil of, uh, I don't know if they're rhinestones or beads or whatever they are, but they establish kind of like this square grid style pattern 
in her face and then behind her she's got this uh, what I think is a picture of a sun or a star it's it's formed that forms kind of a halo around her head and that's you know so so that's kind of you know juxtaposing you know circular stuff with straight lines uh, that kind of juxt juxtaposition of geometry and just also the the color palette is just real was just really interesting it's kind of a almost an oversaturated color scheme uh, but yeah just the artistry of that just really kind of blew me away. I, I, I really enjoyed that. Uh, and, and the album, too, is, is very good. You'll, you'll be hearing it. it. It is in my favorite albums of the year list. I won't tell you where. But, uh, yeah, that was my second favorite. But my favorite album cover of the year is for one of the two uh, Elton John tribute albums that came out early this year. It is the cover for Restoration. And it is actually a photograph of a work of art that was actually done by Bernie Taupin. He is a visual artist as well, and I just I just absolutely love the composition of it. It's I mean you know any kind of art that has to do with music uh, is going to um, intrigue me, at least. Uh, but yeah, I just love for some reason I just love the composition of it. It's a, a bit rustic, uh, which kind of fits because this was the the uh, country and folk uh, album of uh, the the pair of albums put out. But yeah, just the, the juxtaposition of the British... You'll, you'll notice, if you look carefully, a British flag and also an American flag. They're kind of intertwined uh, in the background, you know, with, with the other you know, musical instruments on top of it. It's just, I just absolutely love... I could... I would love to have a full-size poster of that on my wall. I would, I would just love to look. I would just sit there and stare at it for hours. But yeah, it's just an amazing work of art and my favorite album cover of the year. So I hope you enjoyed these lists today. Uh, there are more lists to come in the next couple of days. Uh, I, I plan to have all my year-end lists out by January 1st. So yeah, keep an eye on my channel. I hope you, as I said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't yet. I would love to have you as a subscriber. Uh, more lists to come, as I said, in the next couple of days. Uh, thank you so, so much for watching. Uh, comments, uh, what were your thoughts on any of these lists? Uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, thank you so much for watching, as I said a few times probably by now. Uh, Happy New Year, and thank you so much for watching. Remember, life's too short to be a music snob.